Well, in this video, we're going to talk about product curves, and we'll probably extend that to the next video. But product curves are really important, and it's crucial that you understand them. So basically, they're just graphs of the three products, product concepts we just discussed in the last video, total product, marginal product, average product, and how they change as the quantity of labor employed changes. So um, what we have here is a graph that shows how total product changes with the quantity of labor employed. The total product curve is similar to the uh, production possibilities frontier or PPF. And it separates the unattainable from the attainable in the short run. So look at here. We have a chart with the total product. And this curve shows how total product changes with the quantity of labor employed, right? So what we so pretty much how I made this graph is from this chart that we had from the last video. Probably be good if you write down all this data so you don't have to uh, refer back so you can refer back to it. But you can see that at 0 at point 0.8, uh, the total product we're making is 0. At point 0.1, the total product we're making is 4. And at point 0.2, 10, and so on. And that's pretty much it uh, when, we're when we're talking about uh, the total product curve. And to make it seem more like the PPF, we could just add these labels, attainable and unattainable. So yeah, it's exactly the PPF, and it separates the unattainable from the attainable. Let's just color that in to highlighter. So this is our attainable. Probably be better if I highlighted it before writing it, but then who cares? Marginal product curve. This is the graph that shows how the marginal product curve relates to the total product curve. So you can see that at the, when we hire the first worker, we pretty much, um, he pretty much produced four units of output. So we have our total product curve and at the second worker we, the second worker we hired, uh, the output we got from two workers was 10. So the, they produce a, uh, difference of six units because 10 units of output minus four units from the first worker uh, that is a difference of six and we pretty much just draw a bar uh, in between it so the height of each bar measures the marginal product of labor so labor increases from two to three total product increases from uh, 10 to 13 in uh, when the third worker is hired. So the marginal product of the third worker is three units of output. So let's just uh, draw this out. So when we hired our second worker, we got 10 units of output. So we got 10 units of output. The red lines designates the 10. Now, when we hire our, uh, our third worker, we got 13 units of output. So that's what we know, and these are the number of workers, so we should probably draw a line to show the number of workers. And now you can see that what we actually came out with is the shape of a box. So that box is pretty much your marginal product. And you can see it totally reflects what we have here, the numbers we have here. Uh, yeah, the yellow bars reflect the numbers that we got in the last video. So making the marginal product graph. To make the marginal product graph, uh, we stack the bars in the previous graph side by side, and the marginal product of labor uh, curve, it passes through the midpoints of these bars. So, yeah, we got the difference in this graph. We found that the difference between the second and the first worker was six, but then you can't really see that just from this graph. 
you can really see that when we uh, when we lay out the graph in a different different perspective and this is the different perspective we have here and you can see that um, it really re just reflects the marginal product curve without the total product curve uh, interfering this is just to get a general idea with the total product curve in view you can see in this graph we don't have the total product curve we just decide to forget about it and just show the marginal product curve and you can see that this is the optimal point between two and one because when we went from uh, when we went from one worker to two workers uh, our marginal product increased to the to the highest number which is six so our optimal point will be the highest point in this graph, right? From then on, it just goes downwards to show a diminishing marginal product. So, almost all production processes are like this one, and it has the following traits: increasing or increasing marginal returns initially, which is shown by this line, this line here, and decrease diminishing marginal returns eventually, which is after this optimal point where it start going where it starts going downward all the way to infinity and beyond. And yeah, in the next video we're gonna talk about increasing marginal returns initially. Uh, please rate, comment, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you guys later.